Hello everyone and welcome. Today's webinar is on filtering and this is the third installment of filtering. And this kind of filtering is a little bit more interactive than the ones we have previously looked at. So if you remember in the uh, second panel over, um, middle tab, there was a filter. This is called filtering on chapters. And in this particular case, we have the year and we can select individual years and it affects everything over here. The other kind of filtering that we did was when we go into a visualization and we right click on an object and we go keep only or exclude. And then additionally to that, we could have come up to a visualization and clicked on the ellipsis, gone down to edit filters, click that, and then use the advanced filter editor to create some advanced filters. The filters we're going to be looking at today are a little bit more interactive. Um, you get to be very specific as to what they're going to do and where they're going to do it, uh, although they're not sophisticated as far as using the and and or in the grouping. So without any further ado, here's how we do it. We're going to come up to and notice we have two visualizations. Uh, one is sales by category and person. Another one is uh, category and subcategory. So we're going to add a filter to this report and the where to find that is up here in these uh, icons. We click on filter. And notice that the filter uh, window popped up at the top. And what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and, and uh, grab category and pull that over into the filter box and let it go. Now by default, it will choose a filter type for you and we will go through the different filter types. Um, this is actually called a link filter um, and we will uh, modify this and show you all the different options. But before we can do that, we actually have to select what target. So we've got a filter, but it, we want to say what we want to have that filter affect. Now in this particular case, we're going to go ahead and select the target. And I'm going to come down here and just click anywhere in Visualization 1. Notice the blue box around Visualization 1. That means it's been selected. And up here, the Apply button appeared. If I wanted to also affect Visualization 2, all I would have to do is click on that and click apply. So I can do that and notice the blue box. I'm going to click again and unselect it because I'm going to show you a different way and go ahead and click on apply. Now when I select furniture, it affected the top visualization but not the bottom. I'm going to change that. So I'm going to come up here to the ellipsis on the right hand side of the filter and click on that. And down here there's an option that says select targets. And notice that my two visualizations, uh, the one that I had selected previously and the other visualization is unselected. I'm going to go ahead and select that and click apply. And as soon as I did that, notice that when I, the uh, two options that I have selected here, office and techno office supplies and technology, were in fact filtered. Now the link bar is not one of my favorites, but it is useful. Um, but, and we're going to go through all the different types of filter options that you have. So to do that, the best way is to look at the format. So if you come over here to the uh, second panel from the left um, and go to the Format tab, you'll notice that um, if you click in the filter area, Format for Filters shows up. Now there's going to be a lot of repeating options for different filters, so I won't go over them every time. But in this uh, particular case, you'll notice that you're, you're going to be formatting the filter. The style is link bar and the font is Arial. You can boot, do bold, italic, and, and underline. You can change the color of the font or the color of the selector. Notice that it's blue and just like here when I've selected it, it was blue. Um, you can go auto, horizontal, or vertical. What that means is that auto right now is because it's at the top, my orientation for my filter, the, the words go uh, horizontally. If I were to move this filter, and I can do that just left click anywhere, drag my filter to the left and notice the blue bar, um, I'm going to let it go, and notice that my orientation is now vertical. That's because auto was selected. So I'm going to go ahead and click um, vertical, which won't change it. But if I were to move it up here, notice that my orientation is still vertical. If I want to change it to horizontal, I can do that. Typically, you're going to want to leave it to auto. That way, it will change as you move it around um, your screen. After the orientation, we have the mode. Typically, we have a mode is with the include or exclude. I would avoid using exclude uh, unless you have a specific need for it. 
allow multiple selections. That gives me the ability to notice that up here office supplies and technology are both um, uh, I can unselect office supplies. That gives me the ability to multi-select. But I can also, if I go ahead and allow multi-selection, uh, every time I, when I click on something, it only allows me to check one option at a time. Unless, of course, I come to all and then everything is selected. Um, make all items the same width. Notice that all is as wide as everything else. Uh, all furniture, office supplies. If I uncheck this, notice that all and everything got a little bit smaller in the area that it takes up. Um, and then the last one, I'm going to go ahead and recheck those. And the last one is show an option for all. So if I uncheck that, this option here will go away. And I uncheck it and notice it went away. So if I recheck it, notice I also get down here an alias. And I can change this alias to whatever I want. And notice instead of all, it says whatever I choose. Now we're going to go look at the different types of filters. So the first one is a checkbox. To me, this is the simplest. Most people get this right off the bat. They can check or uncheck whatever options they want. Um, it's very obvious. Um, I can go ahead and check all. In the format area, um, all of the options are pretty much the same. Auto, horizontal, vertical, uh, include, and then make uh, the width and show option for all. So really not a whole lot. I think this is, to me, this is one of my more used uh, filters. The next one down is the slider. I find this one the least useful of all of the filters. Um, it really is useless because as you slide it, you have no idea what you're selecting. So it's really kind of useless. Some people use this for time. Um, I think the Google selector is better, although we don't have ac access to it, but I'm not even gonna go because I think it's a worthless filter. The next one is the search box. This one is useful and I'm gonna turn these off. This one is useful for when I think have things like uh, order numbers or line numbers or customer numbers and I really want to search on a large list of things. When I start typing then the options will pop up and you have to select it and it'll um, go in. So I just started typing O and notice office supplies and technology because there's an O in technology both showed up. It's a universal search and if I click on that it popped up there. One of the things to note about this is if this is a direct connect to a database, sometimes this doesn't work as well as you'd like because it would have to query the database to get your options. So I would kind of use this only in the in-memory mode and you know that by looking at the data set here. The next option is the link bar and we kind of looked at that when it originally popped up. So I'm not going to go too far into that. One of the things to note is you can change the uh, selection color to something uh, else if you'd like. The button bar, very much like the link bar. I like this one because there's a distinction then between all of my, my choices. And just like some of the other options, I can allow multiple selections or not, uh, all items the same and show an option for all. The next one, the next option is the radio button. This is probably my second most used um, filter. Um, this gives me the single option, one at a time. Again, very much uh, something that most people are familiar with. Um, I use this quite a bit. And a lot of times when I use the button bar, I do not have an option for all. Because I really want to limit what my, my, my end users are looking at. But that's obviously your goal. The drop down button is really kind of useful. Notice that in this particular case, I'm one at a time in my drop down. But I like, there's a function in here that I really like, and it's allow multiple selections. So if I select this, then come back to my technology, I can choose everything and click on OK. And notice that I have the same as if I had, say, a checkbox, but in a lot smaller space. So really, this is really good if you have a limited amount of space to deal with. It gives you some interaction there. And the last one is the list box. Uh, list box is very much like the, we talked about this, that um, link bar, but the list box only has a vertical orientation. There is no horizontal. Notice that if I go back, notice in here there's no uh, auto, horizontal, vertical. If I go back to the link bar, notice that auto, horizontal, vertical. But if I go to the 
uh, list box, it doesn't. So even if I were to pull this to the left or keep it at the top, it's always a vertical orientation. There's one additional type, and I'll very quickly go over that. It's the order date. So I'm going to go ahead and add another filter by clicking on the icon. And then I'm going to come down here to order date and drag that into here. And notice that I can and select target, click here, and apply. I'm going to get rid of this, but it gives me the ability to have a calendar. And I can also do dynamic dates in here. So if I want to do today, plus or minus a certain number of days or months, I can do that. So this is pretty useful, obviously, for, for calendaring. Um, this is where, do me a favor, write to MicroStrategy, say you want a slider bar that's like the Google slider uh, for time, that would be very helpful. So I'm going to delete that. Uh, I'm going to keep this a list box. I'm actually going to add another list box uh, filter. And in this one, I'm going to put subcategory. I'm going to select my targets as Visualization 1 and Visualization 2, and click on Apply. Change this to a list box. And I'm going to move this over to the right of... Now notice that I've got furniture selected. I could select Office Supplies. Notice this list doesn't seem to be changing. And if I check Office Supplies and go to Copiers, uh-oh, what happened? Well, the problem here is that copiers are not a subcategory of office supplies. They're a subcategory of technology, so these two filters are not working together. So how do I get them to work together? So if I choose technology, copiers are. So what I want to do is I want to come back over to the category, go to the ellipsis, and, and click on the ellipsis, and go select targets, and notice that subcategory, the filter for subcategories there, and click on apply. So now when I change this filter, this filter changes automatically. So if I choose furniture and bookcases, I actually get results. That's it. Hopefully you found this useful. Have a good day.